<laughs> Hello and welcome to Henry's Band in the Box channel. And again, this is Henry's channel, right? And what I do is I kind of show you guys how to do production techniques and tips in Band in the Box. Well, it's almost Christmas, right? So I got a couple of days that, and I'm off and I'm not doing too much of anything. And my 2022 arrived. I know I had a, a video out there about upgrading, right? Well, I did upgrade and my pack came and it was so easy for me because doing the upgrade through a hard drive is kind of just plug and play. I transferred a few files over. I transferred my files over to the new drive. I transferred some real tracks and styles that I previously had and transferred those over and I was off and running. So right now you're looking at 2022. And in 2022 is some features in there, right? But one feature that jumped out at me immediately was the feature called volume automation. And if you don't know what volume automation is, volume automation actually automatically lets you adjust the levels in your track. So you can take instruments out, you can bring them in, you can raise the volume, you can lower the volume, right? And it can really, really come in handy when you're putting a song together. And I'm gonna give you a quick example of that. This is a song I call Everything I Do that I actually did it in Band in a Box musically. And then I moved it, of course, over to my sonar because I'm a big sonar fan when it comes to singing and stuff like that, right? But ma most major DAWs have had volume automation for a long, long, long time, right? Now, Band in a the Box, they may have had it in real band. I don't know. I'm not a real band user. But it appears that there's an effort from PG Music to allow you to do more within the Band in a Box console without even going to real band. And I just think that's just fantastic because now you can pretty much do a little bit more and write a little bit more without having to worry about actually loading out real band. And I think this automation tool may have been a part of that overall strategy, kind of like multi riffs and things like that, right? Could be part of that strategy in allowing you to do more inside of the band in the box console without you having to go to an external console or even using a doll if that's your choice. But anyway, so just to show you some, some, another version of automation that you may find in a commercial, another commercial doll, right? Like in Sonar, this is a song that I did. And if you listen to the song, you will see that I've actually got some patterns that are actually going. So the same song here that I'm, I'm going to play the song for you in a minute. So this is the song. It's going to be the same song that you're going to hear in Band in the Box. But this is the song right now that's transferred over into my sonar because I've got some other things that I'm going that I have going on. Ever since the day we met, I tell you it's no lie. I've never been in love before, even though I tried. So that's enough of that. <laughs> that's enough of that. So what I want to show you though is that I have automation in here because what happens is that I have 16 tracks going into uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buses, right? So these tracks are going into these seven buses. So in order for me to control this song, I only have to control seven faders. Well, even that becomes a lot at certain points in time, right? Especially vocals, because, you know, we don't sing the same level, right? Sometimes we sing too loud. Sometimes we sing too soft. And, of course, compressors help tremendously in trying to level your, your volume out, right? But, again, you may want to bring up certain parts, and especially background vocals, right? Because even though they're spot on, you may not want them as loud in certain portions. But for this particular demonstration, I'm going to show you guys the this is the volume automation line. If you notice this green line here, this is volume automation in play. And if you notice how it goes up and down, there's a background vocal that's going on in this song. And if you, I'm going to play it for you. And watch these faders. Look at this G over here, this, this bus number G, which is synth background, right? And if you listen to that, watch the fader move up and down as it gets to that part. Let's see if fader's going up and down because it's following the path. actually following the path of that note. Well, I may want to do the same thing with my lead vocals because my lead vocals are actually, I have a low lead and a high lead and they're going into a bus called full lead. <laughs> Have I complicated it yet? You know, but if I turn on automation and I'm going to turn on automation, right, which is right here where my mouse says right enable parameters on. So I'm going to write an actual um, fader pattern to go with that so that I can raise and lower the volume. So if I do that, and I'm going to start from say bar seven. And 
you'll watch out, you'll see a green line show up. See, there's my line. And maybe I want, I can take the, I can take the vocal down. I can bring the vocal up. So I can play. Sometimes I might have a, 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 a phrase too loud. And I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So I wrote that out, right? So now I'm going to take it off, and when I play it this time, it's going to read what my fader was doing going up and down. And if you check it out and see, we watch the fader now. And again, it's on, it's on my full lead bus over here. Look at my fader go up and down. And now we don't to do that because that doesn't sound right. I just want to give you a demonstration. So in a nutshell, that's volume automation. Now that's volume automation in a uh, a third party DAW. I just use like Sonar, right? Um, I do like it better because you're writing your automation with your fader. As you move your fader up and down, it writes your automation. And of course, if you don't like it, you can just take. You just, I can just right click on it. I can delete the entire envelope, so the whole thing's gone. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about automation. And you can do it for different tracks, right? Well, let me close this down. Well, Band in the Box incorporated volume automation also, right? Now, what made it significant is that when you use standard Band in the Box, all you had to do was go to bar settings. So if you click here and you went to bar settings, right, you could actually, if you notice in this grouping here, you can actually change, you can mute, you can back to normal, you can fade, whatever instrument you want to fade, right? But what's missing? If you look at it closer, you'll see that I've got my bass, my guitar, my drums, my organ. But what's missing is utility tracks. So if you have a song and you have used utility tracks, right? Utility tracks were not included in this particular technique of adjusting the overall volumes of your song. So now if I go on and I add a utility track, and by the way, this is great what they have done with utility tracks because what they have done is in the past when they did 2021, they would just name utility track. Now they actually follow the actual track. I think it's really, really cool that they do that now. So again, so I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna add another guitar. And notice it came up as guitar. Now in the past, it would have come up as utility one. Utility two, I'm going to add Oh, let's see, I'm gonna add um, a piano. I'm gonna add an acoustic piano. And for guitar four, I'm going to add, let me see, I'll just add, what will be good? I'm gonna add the same guitar again because it may play a different pattern. So now I'm using three utility tracks. If you go here and look, you'll see, I'm actually using three utility tracks now. But they show by name. I think it is so cool that they've done that. I'm, I'm so glad that they've done that. Uh, because, they, like I said, they didn't, they didn't do that before, you know. So now I have three utility tracks, right? But check it out now. So now if I try to do automation through bar settings, look what's missing. My utility tracks are not there because they weren't written into this particular part of the program. So when I want to do automation right now i won't use this anymore now if you're doing all of your tracks strictly from the top band in a box tracks then you can still use your bar settings and it will come out just fine but if you want to use fading and things like techniques like that with utility tracks you need to get familiar with volume automation it's just one of those things you have to do so how do you do that right well oh and here's another thing i don't recommend doing both I recommend you do either one or the other. Either you're going to do your automation through bar settings or you're going to do your automation through the audio edit tool, which is what I clicked just now, the audio edit tool, right? So now what happens is that I get to pick whatever instrument I want. So I'm going to leave the bass as normal. I'm going to leave the guitar as normal, the drums as normal. I'm going to leave all these as normal in the intro. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the organ out until I get to a bar where I want it to come back is what I'm going to do. So as I play through the song, and for practical, I'm going to mute, mute, mute my utility tracks for right now.
Notice my organs there, right? And I could actually lower the volume, but you know, right now, I just wanted to say it is right now for for, track, for training, for practical, <laughs> oh God, tongue tied, for practical purposes. Now this is where I would start singing, right? Now, I don't want the organ, starting from bar of nine, I don't want the organ anymore, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here at bar nine, and I'm going to set a node here, right? So I'm going to just click and notice it turned, the circle turned uh, blue, right? That's a, that's considered a node. I'm going to put another node here. So now when I want to take the organ out, right, all I have to do now is just take the organ down. And you'll hear the organ actually fade. I'm going to take the organ all the way down to nothing. I don't want the organ in at all, right? So now if I play it, what you're going to notice is you're going to notice I'm going to play from uh, bar 8, so if I play from bar eight, see, the organ's gone. I think that's really, really cool, right? Now, when do I want it to come back, right? I think I want it to come back when the song changes a bit. I'm still automating just the organ right now. So it, I want it back at bar 17. So what do I do? I roll over to note 17, to bar 17. I put a note in again. I put another note in. And I'm going to bring the organ back up at bar 17. So now when I do this, starting from bar 9, I want to play from bar 9. Let's play from bar 8. Organ's there. Organ's gone. I never knew the love before, even though I tried. See, I didn't want that organ in the way. I wanted to make sure I had room for my vocal in there, right? The blue, I'd always end up all alone, wondering what... Organ back. Notice the Manamo organ's back. That's really cool. I like that, right? So now also, now I can play around with my other instruments that I may want to decide, you know, how I want to use them, right? So maybe for guitar three, if I go back and I play guitar three, let's just play from the very beginning. I'm gonna go all the way back to the very beginning. And let's see what bar three, um, what guitar three sounds like. I like that rhythm. That's what it sounds like. I like that picking. But I don't want that picking until I get to the, to the verse because I like to have some picking up under my lead vocal, right? So what I'm gonna do with that, this is guitar three. I'm gonna to go to guitar three, and right off the bat, you know what I'm gonna do with guitar three? I'm gonna take guitar three, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down to nothing. I don't want guitar three playing at all in the beginning. So I'm gonna take guitar three, and I'm gonna bring it all the way down to zero. And when I start singing at bar nine, I'm going to bring it back. So I'll put a note here, and I'm going to bring it back, but not as hot as it as it was before. Just just kind of just a nice little medium pace, right? Just to give it a little background filler. So I'm going to do that, and I'll just put another note here, and kind of keep it up in here. And then when I get to bar seventeen, I'm going to take it back down. And I'm not going to bring it back up again until I get to the hook. So now when I do it, if I play the entire song from the beginning, remember, I took my organ, uh, come on here, I took my organ, right, and I only had it play the first eight bars. Notice guitar three is not playing at all. This is really, really good. I really, really like this, right? Because again, I only want that little picking sound when I start singing. So as I move through, right, I'm almost ready. Get ready to sing right here. See that? I really like that. So that's how volume automation works. I'm not going to take you guys through the whole song. It'll take forever, right? You know, but I can do those things. It's the same. I can do that with the piano, right? When do I want the piano to come in, right? Do I want the piano in the beginning of the song or do I want the piano later, right? Um, I, who knows? I don't know right now, you know. 
So I just leave the piano as it is, right? One thing I definitely, I definitely, I definitely do not want the piano when I start singing. For, for, for whatever, with this particular song, I only wanted uh, guitars. I only wanted guitars playing when I, when I first started singing this song. So again, I'm going to go to my piano. Here's my piano bar. And at bar nine on piano, I'm going to take it down to zero. I don't want the piano playing, and I'm not going to bring it back again until bar 17. So as I roll over to bar 17, I'll set up another note here, and I'm going to bring my piano up at bar 17. So now my piano is not playing either until I get to the change in the song, which is bar, uh, I'm sorry, it, it, my piano goes out, it starts in the intro, then it goes out at bar 9, and then it comes back in at bar 17. So this is what I'm talking about, How and, and it helps me build dynamics also into the song. Piano is still playing. That's going to drop out. It's gone. I love the guitar sound of this song. I just think that, that the real tracks that they developed, I think it's just great. They give me the exact feel that I was looking for. Piano's in, organ's in. So that's what I'm talking about. Now, the difference, of course, like I said, I cannot, if I take audio edit off and I try to do this through the bar settings, it doesn't allow me to do that because in the bar settings window, I don't have access to change the mood or change the volume of my utility tracks, which are guitar three, piano and guitar four. I don't have that capability, right? So again, the, the key point here is that if you're going to do the song strictly within the first seven tracks of Band in a Box, then you probably don't need the audio edit window, unless you want to pre-mix it within the program. But if you want to use utility tracks as part of your pre-mix also, and when I say pre-mix, it could also be your final mix, right? You know, then audio edit is the way to go. It's really it's really just that simple. Does it take a little time? Uh, pr probably, it probably takes a little time. And also, you know, you can make changes um, I saw where someone said, well, you can't make changes. Yes, you can make changes, right? You can take bars in, you can take bars out. But just remember, what you do if you do that is you are changing the overall um, automation wave is what you're changing. You're changing your nodes when you do that, right? So you don't want to get your nodes confused. So what I suggest strongly is that have the song done. If you have the song done when you do it, then you probably won't have any difficulties and it will play straight out as it is and you shouldn't have any issues right whereas if you start playing around with changing um, changing bars and changing chords and things like that actually it will go with the chords but if you start changing other elements of the song right then you know you may have some issues but it's like anything else right what happens we don't really play with our faders and play with our mix until we're done with our song is, is that because that's just kind of a standard practice right what well, the same applies here I'm not going to play with the audio edit until I'm close to being complete with what I want in the song and what I don't want in the song that's when I would do it and again this is doing it totally totally within the band in the box console so now if I wanted to I could also hook my mic up and record audio and do the entire song without ever leaving the band in the box console and I think that's really where they're headed and what they're trying to do is they're trying to give you more functionality within the band in the box console without you ever having to leave band in the box so you don't even have to go to real band or go to commercial doll or anything else right now of course me I will always go over to my sonar because I do more stuff. I have tons of background vocals and all of those types of things. But for the type of music that I hear a lot of people do, right, I think this is an absolute fantastic feature for them. So again, it's called Audio Edit. How do you use it? You go into whatever instrument that you want to deal with. Whatever instrument you want to deal with, your entire instrument window will show up. You go there and you create what we call nodes. So you create a node for when you want that instrument to play. 
and whether you want it to play loud, whether you want it to play soft, how do you create a note? You just click and it gives you a note. Click again, you get a note. It's really, it's really, it really just that simple to do that, right? And now you can adjust the volume levels to compare to however you want to hear them. You can, again, when you when you get to a part where you want to bring them back, you can just click here, you can bring them back, you can, you can even peek them, right, if you want to. I mean, you can actually drive it all the way up there so it'll just blast for a second, right? And then maybe it comes back in and maybe a little softer, right? That's it. It's really that. It's an easy, it's an easy thing to do. How you use it may be a bit, a little bit, I don't want to say frustrating, right? But, cause, but there are so many things you can do within the console now that you couldn't do before. And again, it incorporates all of the utility tracks. And the nice thing about the utility tracks that have changed in 2022 is that where they used to come up as utility one, utility two, and utility three, now they actually come up with the name of the actual utility track that you use. So I hope this helps you guys with volume automation, right? Again, it's through the audio edit window. And I will see you guys more in 2022 when I have other tutorials out. But hopefully this one will help you get started anyway, right? And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye. It's all because of you.